I'm Ashton Addison from EventChain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Adam O'Brien, the CEO of Bitcoin Solutions. Adam, thanks so much for taking the time and welcome to the show. Thanks, Ashton. Great to be here. You're very welcome. I'd love to kick off the show by just getting a little bit of your background and how you first got involved with Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies and what made you start Bitcoin Solutions. Yeah, so um, I found Bitcoin in early 2013 and um, kind of got what they're calling red pilled, uh, what they call now is being red pilled, but just fell right on the rabbit hole and kind of fell in love with the technology and the way that um, just that decentralized kind of monetary policy works. And so um, found myself kind of wanting to buy some, finding it very difficult to actually acquire Bitcoin. Um, I was I was forced with either meeting a guy in a back alley or wiring money to Russia and, and kind of uh, didn't like either option. So um, was constantly seeking for better ways to do it. Um, eventually kind of created a little bit of a, of a peer-to-peer network here in Edmonton and then largely in Alberta. Um, and then um, shortly in 20, shortly after, in early 2014, we deployed our first uh, Bitcoin ATM, actually Alberta's first Bitcoin ATM uh, in February. And then in May of 2014, we deployed Saskatchewan's first. So from there, kind of just expanded and stuck to this non-custodial, um, you know, fast and safe way to acquire and buy Bitcoin. And, uh, and from, you know, from there, we kind of sit today at uh, just, just over 70 ATMs across Canada. Wow. Very cool. And I love that backstory. It's a true entrepreneurial, you know, venture. You find a problem that <laughs> you're facing. There must be a better way. <laughs> exactly. Right. And you're like, there's got to be a solution for my problem. And there you go. Now there's 70 plus ATMs across Canada. So that's an amazing uh, start. So very cool, Adam. I'd love to talk about more into what makes Bitcoin solutions unique and exact services you're providing. You know, how exactly are you accelerating virtual currency adoption throughout the country right now with Bitcoin solutions? Yeah, I think so from day one, the mission's always been make Bitcoin accessible and understood. So we've always held and, and put a big focus on customer interaction and making sure that anyone that walked through our doors or, you know, walked through our doors, um, entered onto our website, got in touch with our with our team uh, via email or phone, gets kind of that well-rounded experience. You know, if they have a question like, you know, the the vague question, what is Bitcoin or uh, the direct question, how do I use an ATM? We're giving them kind of that same level of experience and kind of tailoring the knowledge that's needed for them. So that's been great um, from there. In terms of what Bitcoin Solutions actually does is we're focused on non-custodial buying and selling of Bitcoin. So what that means is that at no time is anyone's Bitcoin exposed, right? When you use an online exchange, when we use a bank, uh, we put our funds in somebody else's hands and we trust somebody else. And I personally don't believe in that. And so personally for the company that um, I'm lucky enough to be in charge of and that I was, you know, kind of that I founded and <laughs> all the rest of it, we wanted to make sure that users had the same kind of protection that I would want for my mm -hmm. own funds. So mm -hmm. that's kind of been the number one way that I feel like we're really driving this financial sovereignty and, and, mm -hmm. and educating society and educating the people to kind of be better with their money um further from that you know we're kind of keen on making bitcoin usable now so um you know when we started in 2013 when i said i'm working in in the bitcoin industry people kind of said bitcoin what's that mm -hmm. uh today people say oh bitcoin i've heard of that i'm not quite sure how to use it and so now we've kind of tailored our focus around being able to use bitcoin if you go on our website uh, you're able to pay your bills in bitcoin so you go online you type in your 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 F -core bill you type in your account number um, and the amount that you owe, and you're 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 able to just kind of send Bitcoin to pay that account off. Um, we're we're working on launching, and we plan to be launching before the end of the year um, some merchant services. So being able to walk into a store and pay with Bitcoin, mm -hmm. um, you know, from there we certainly plan on being able to integrate kind of these these Lightning Network applications mm -hmm. that um, are definitely going to be kind of advancing the usability of. Of Bitcoin, so that's kind of how we plan on on making Bitcoin more usable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that you're taking the next step, and it really is. Once you are at the ATM and you have the coin, now how do I spend it, or how is it functional, right? And the more places that you can use it, the greater the adoption, the easier it'll be to make it, you know, regular money that you just buy and buy and sell uh, items with it every day, using it like it would be the Canadian dollar, the American dollar. So I'm glad. Yeah, exactly. You're with I think that. making the Bitcoin ecosystem strong is definitely going to behoove the entire Bitcoin industry. Mm -hmm. So I was looking into Bitcoin solutions and you have some really big news coming up about 
being the first Bitcoin ATM company to be publicly listed uh, on, and you're going to be on the TSX venture. Can you tell us a little bit about how you feel about going public? How is it going to help Bitcoin solutions and what are the benefits of being a listed company? Yeah, certainly. Ultimately, being a listed company um, is going to give us credibility. And that's one thing that this industry has kind of lacked. You know, we've seen, we've all seen the headlines in Canada, certainly. Um, we've had a number of different Bitcoin exchanges that have gone dark. As they say, um, Bitcoin right now doesn't have a phenomenal name in mainstream media. So what we're hoping to do is give investors a different picture of what a Bitcoin company is. We're going to market. We are profitable. We are a company that prides itself on security, prides itself on customer safety. And we plan on showing investors that investing in the Bitcoin market is a smart and strong thing to do. And so what we had to do was we had to do something different than just buy and sell Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. um, we had to do, do I think more than that? And we had to show investors that there's two ways to invest in the Bitcoin ecosystem. There's just buying Bitcoin. That's a very smart thing to do at all times. But there's also buying Bitcoin companies or buying equity in Bitcoin companies mm -hmm. through a registered vehicle. And that's very attractive to most customers. I mean, or to most retail investors. We saw in 2017, this landslide of money come into the space, people desperate to get into the Bitcoin ecosystem, but not really sure how to set up a private key. Not sure, mm -hmm. you know, is my Bitcoin really safe if, if I hold it myself? So we're hoping to give a vehicle to those investors that can invest in a profitable company whose volumes will benefit from the rise of Bitcoin, but who ultimately is a transactional business. And mm -hmm. therefore, even as the price of Bitcoin kind of tumbles, um, as we've seen it do, and as, as we're expecting it to do, as our company plans um, for it to do, we're able to really, I think, give those investors the ability to benefit in both bull and bear markets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really interesting. And I'm looking forward to seeing that come out to full fruition in, in the Canadian markets. So uh, good luck with finalizing all of that and moving it out. And you know, talking about um, what makes Bitcoin solutions unique, you talked about the fact that you have a non-custodial service and you mentioned uh, the fact that a lot of people in, in Canada at least have, have heard of, oh, Bitcoin, I, I know about it now, but how do I use it? And also there's all of these different news articles I've seen about you know people losing their funds or things getting hacked and things like that, right? And with the non-custodial version, you're not really, you know, holding people's funds. Uh, at least they're holding it on in their own wallet, right? And I think that the applications have become a little bit easier to use where, you know, they, they show you the, the, the backup phrase or the password and, and you have that access and, you know, you can easily control your own funds. Um, do you think that that is something that makes your platform unique or what else makes Bitcoin Solutions unique from the investor perspective uh, of, you know, growing this venture out through Canada right now? Yeah, certainly. So I think from an investor standpoint, we're unique because we're essentially seven years old in a seven year old industry. Um, we have as much market knowledge as is possible right now. Mm -hmm. So we're definitely excited to be leaning on that market knowledge. Um, we know how to strategically place an ATM. We know how to strategically market an ATM and we know how to get it functioning at a hundred percent kind of optimized efficiency. So mm -hmm. from the investor standpoint, I think they should feel very comfortable in, in our ability to execute from the customer's perspective though. I think what truly makes us unique is just that we care so much about protecting our customer. Um, we plan to protect them, not by doing anything for them, but by teaching them how to do it. So an example might be, you know, our anti-fraud software we've been working on for, for quite some time. Everyone's heard the calls. Everyone's gotten the calls. Send us an iTunes gift card, you know, send mm -hmm. me a prepaid phone SIM to pay your taxes or because your, your power bill is outstanding, et cetera, et cetera. So what we do is, is when those victims come to our ATM, we actually display a mm -hmm. bit of a questionnaire to them and we kind of force them to think twice about it, force them to really answer for themselves, you know, why am I doing this? And then of course, displaying warnings across the way. So, mm -hmm. you know, we're not obligated to do that. We don't necessarily have to do that. It certainly doesn't help the business. Mm -hmm. um, but what, what it does is it helps our customer, which of course mm -hmm. on the grand scheme of things does help the business. And we're very, very in tune with what the customer um, desires. And we want to make sure that we're giving the customer kind of the education to, you know, whether or not they're being kind of spoon fed through the transaction. We want to be able to, we want them to be able to succeed on the next transaction as well. Definitely. And, Speaking of you know scams and phishing, there's been a lot of that uh, so far during the pandemic of 2020 here. It seems mm -hmm. like people are tar being targeted when they're most vulnerable. And I'm curious 
How has Bitcoin Solutions fared throughout 2020, having the pandemic, and has it affected you personally and the company in, in good ways or bad ways? Yeah, um, difficult to say. You know, we've kind of been been planning for 2020 to be a massive growth year. So we mm -hmm. had a bunch of stuff set in place uh, from last year's strategy sessions that we're able to implement this year. So how, what the pandemic did for that was, was ultimately it charged us with the task of kind of shifting focus. So where we planned on deploying a ton of ATMs in April, uh, of course, three quarters of the world was shut down in April. So we weren't <laughs> able to do that. So what did we do was we shifted to our online deployments. And, mm -hmm. and in the month of April and May, uh, we struck a partnership with Fidali. So we were able to um, sell gift cards on our website. And then of course we launched um, the ability to fund your account uh, through Canada Post. So now mm -hmm. anyone in Canada can go to, I think there's four or 6,000 Canada Post locations across Canada, fund your Bitcoin solutions um, kind of account in order to buy Bitcoin. So I think that's, that's kind of, you know, ways that we were able to, to kind of adapt. Um, and then we put those ATM deployments that were supposed to come in April, we kind of started those out in, uh, in the early parts of, of Q3 of this year. So um, certainly the pandemic didn't help. Uh, of course, we, we saw a hit, right? We had 75% mm -hmm. of our of our locations were shut down. It kind of adjusted our focus, you know, which kind of locations are going to be beneficial in the event of a of a next wave or, mm -hmm. or kind of, you know, we we definitely had to revisit the strategy board. But I feel very lucky to be in an industry that um, promotes financial sovereignty and ultimately with a government kind of having no end in sight around financial money printing and and a, a very very bad monetary policy, if I could be blunt, um, you know, we're in an industry that kind of protects against that. So I do mm -hmm. feel like, um, you know, Bitcoin users and Bitcoin solutions customers are on the winning side mm -hmm. um, of a horrible pandemic. Yeah, well, it's interesting that you point that out because I've seen a lot of Bitcoin ATMs strategically placed in, you know, coffee shops or convenience stores. And I've seen a lot of coffee shops that are empty right now. Right. Yeah. And uh, so there's definitely a shift, but I'm glad that you've been able to stay on top of it, pivot, work on the online solutions. Um, and that part about the Canada Post with going to any Canada Post outlet, I didn't know about that. That's actually amazing. And that's a great step forward for Canadians with virtual currency adoption. And I'm curious on your high level outlook on virtual currency adoption throughout Canada right now, you know, do do you see it uh, with 2020, everything that's happened? Is it sort of projected on the growth that you were anticipating from the previous years and maybe uh, forecast to what Bitcoin adoption might look like in the next year or two as well? Yeah, great question. I mean, I think that last year actually set the stage for truthfully what, the, what, what Canadians can expect. I think that, you know, as of... Um, as of June, uh, you know, of course, we are officially an MSB, which has been fantastic. And the regulations came into place, which is which is great. And all that stuff was kind of set in stone um, starting last year. So so I think that that really shows the way that we're able to now interact before we were operating in this kind of unknown and we weren't really able to make any choices. And now that we have some guidance, we're able to really put our foot on the gas, and kind of just drive um, the way that I think, you know, I am traditionally uh, quite bad at predicting our growth in the fact that I never predicted to be high enough. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. in 2017, we had these, these grand visions of, of what it could be. And I think that, you know, by June or July of 2017, right, we, we'd already blown those predictions mm -hmm. out of the water. Same thing's happening this year, you know, right now, um, we're on pace to, to really blow these projections that we set at the beginning of the year kind of out of the water. And, and I, I, I truthfully do feel very lucky to be able to say that, you know, we're in the midst of this pandemic and, and we have a business that is able to, to still grow and thrive. And I, and I think that, you know, we have uh, this incredible team here that's just been working like dogs and, and, and everyone is just so, so kind of focused on our mission of making Bitcoin accessible, mm -hmm. understood that it doesn't really, it's not really dawning on anyone. I thought, I think just, just how far we're kind of moving the needle, which is super exciting. Mm -hmm. That is super exciting and great to hear that you're ahead of your projections and hopefully that's, uh, a positive for the whole space moving forward as well. And you know we're running Certainly. out of time, Adam, but I'd love to hear uh, m ways that we can find out more information for, for the viewers or for people that are looking at finding an ATM or for investors to, to hear about the investor relations. What's the best way for them to learn more and to get involved? Yeah, certainly head to our website, bitcoinsolutions.ca. 
uh, you're going to find a large part of our info there. And of course, uh, we have a Medium page um, and we have a, a Twitter page at BTC Solutions CA. If you head to our Twitter page, everything kind of gets blasted out in real time over there. So mm -hmm. certainly uh, on the website or on Twitter, we're pretty active and definitely excited to kind of share the good news. Great. Well, I'll leave those links in the description box below. Thanks so much for your time, Adam. All the best with Bitcoin Solutions moving forward and let's follow up in the near future. Thanks, Ashton. I really appreciate it.